How's it going, everybody? And welcome to How Good Is It Really? My name is Jeremiah. I'm Luke. And today we're going to talk about the brand new 2022 film, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Okay, let's jump right into it. Yeah. So, uh, we're just going to go through, rate it in our 10 different categories, spoiler free. And give our initial rating first, and then we will jump into full spoilers and give our final ratings at the end. Right about the 15 to 20 minute mark is typically where we're going to hit for that, so be watching for that. We will give you a heads up, but just know, there will be spoilers in this video. They will come after, and you will have warning. Yes. So let's okay. start. Uh, writing. First category. Oh, man. Doctor Strange. Okay. I'm going to let you go first. Because I, I need to like encapsulate how I want to say this. I know, because I know you have a lot of thoughts. Lots. And not all of them positive. <laughs> this is how... Okay. All Marvel films at this point, and this one specifically is a sequel. It is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. It is Doctor Strange 2. It is playing off of everything that has come before it. If you don't know what came before it, that's your fault, because the content is there, it's available, and it's one continuous story. I agree, I agree. There, there's, there is no reason to detract from this film on the basis that I don't know what happened before. If yeah, you don't... That's on you. You either A, have been living under a rock because it's Marvel, and it's been plastered everywhere <laughs> by Disney and by, I mean, even commercials. Like, you'd have to be really, really far removed to not know. That's that all really good. <laughs> For the most part, I, I mean, most I, of it is really I am good. not a Marvel. Okay, I, I'll give my, my 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 kind of the upfront bias. I could care less about Marvel. I, I've always felt this way. <laughs> I do not care. Um, I never read comic books growing up. My first introduction to Marvel was watching Iron Man in two thousand eight. I think yep. is when it came out. My yep. grandfather Summer took me to go see it. Uh, I watched it. I thought it was a cool movie. That's it. I didn't like. Yeah. I didn't care really. Not until Captain America, and then I really started to kind of understand what was like, okay, they're going to make a like a whole universe out of this. Right. And then for my senior graduation, uh, my entire senior uh, class went and saw Avengers, uh, the, oh, cool. the first one, yeah. um, right right there in town. It was really cool. We all went and, go, went and saw it together in, in 2012. Um, that was a good memory. That Again, I didn't care about the characters. I just thought it was a cool movie. All right, fair enough. Um, yeah, going off what I already said, every movie of Marvel at this point is the next episode in the greater series that is going on for uh, 14 years now. Yeah, it's a long um, time. Yeah. So in that context, um, I think the writing of this movie is actually pretty good. It falters because... It has a hard time being self-contained, but not in not in the sense that you have to know other things, in the sense that this movie does a lot to set up everything else that is going to happen over the next four movies. It doesn't focus so much on what is happening in this movie so much as it does what is going to happen in a lot of the other movies, which is the kind of the big fault for me of this movie where a lot of it feels like that, where they're setting up this is going to happen, and then this thing is going to happen down the road. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's this here, and this is going to come through, you know, come to pass in like six years or something like that, which is all really cool. This movie does a lot for the big picture of the Marvel Universe. Okay. Which I like a lot. But because of that, it kind of suffers as an individual film, even looking at it in context of a, one episode yeah. in an ongoing series where it rushes through certain things and the writing I think is good I'd, a 7 I'd give the writing a 7 okay so <laughs> keep it concise <laughs> uh, I hate woke movies I can't stand political messaging in my films I don't like being preached at and I like it even less when I'm being preached at by a tone deaf writing uh, team. I think this movie has three visions that were originally slated for it. You have Sam Raimi's vision for this film, and then you had the guy that got fired, or left, I can't remember which. Is that Scott Derrickson? Yes, it was. And then you had the the execs. I think Louis Sam... Louis Esposito and Kevin Feige. Yeah. So... Mainly Kevin Feige. Yeah. 
So Sam Raimi, I think, does a great job with this movie. I've always liked Sam Raimi's movies. I love okay. the Evil Dead series, the original Spider-Man trilogy. Super good. I, I think Sam Raimi does a good job as a director. I think he does a good job with what he has. I don't think this movie can be blamed for the reasons why I think it is not that great. Cannot be blamed on him. I think he does a good job with what he did, and he does Sam Raimi in this film. Yeah, and many, many Raimi isms from yes, his and, and just there are there are toning there there are tone. Uh, there, there's how do I say this right? There are sections of the film that feel disjunct and they feel separate, and it's because you have, like I said, there's there's three separate visions of the film that kind of kind of that you could totally tell that it that this film was cut apart and refilmed and reshot and then recompiled and released <laughs> and, and it just it's not sam raimi's fault i think that he did a good job with what he was given but i think that this movie suffers from just when when your producers are mandating that you have to have this specific, you have to hit these beats and you have to tell it this way and you have to say these things and do this thing. I think I know what you're talking about and I think you're wrong. There's a but lot we'll of there. points. It's not just there's one big one. That yeah. one was not as big of an issue as like the vast majority of the other issues I had with it. We'll get into them. We will. Later. So that as far as writing is concerned, six. Okay, I can go down to a six. Six is for I'm, me. That's still above five, where it's like it's good. Like six to seven is is good. Like, it's entertaining. It's, it's fine. Yeah, it's entertaining. I mean, you will be entertained if you watch this film. But if you <laughs> if you, if you have a political bone in your body and you don't like being preached at, or you have I don't think conservative leanings, you I, you will you will be offended. I you have will have problems. Leanings, and I don't think this movie preaches. We'll get into okay, it. I I certainly feel like it did. All I, right, well, next category, acting. <laughs> oh man, okay. Benedict Cumberpatch is Benedict Cumberpatch. I think Cumberbatch. he did Cumberpatch. Thank you. Yes, he did a great job. I, th I think he's Doctor Strange, and I think that he does Doctor Strange well. I think that <laughs> Wong is Wong. He did a great job at being Wong. Benedict Wong. Yes, he did. A, he he he's great. Um. What's the name of the uh, the love interest? I can't cannot remember her name. She has red hair. Oh, Rachel McAdams. Thank you. Um, her character, I think she did a good job too. Uh, I think that a little one dimensional, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, they gave her more to do than she had previously because uh, of all the different parts she gets to play. Yeah, she's still a little movie. snarky in like the gutches and the one-liners. But I, I, I've always liked her in the role. I like Rachel McAdams. She's a good actress. Yeah, I didn't have anything that it is. It's fine. Everybody does a good job. I won't even say serviceable. Everybody does a good job portraying sure. their characters in this movie. I will. In the spoilers, there there are a few places. There are a few characters sure. specifically that I think they got they got done dirty hard. <laughs> And I don't think it's the actor's fault. I think if okay. it was the way it was written. So I won't talk about that now. Uh, and then you have Wanda Maximoff. I cannot yes. remember her, the actress's name. Elizabeth Olsen. Elizabeth, man. Elizabeth Olsen nails it in this movie. She is the star of this movie. This is not a movie about Doctor Strange. This is a movie about Elizabeth Olsen's character. Kind of in a way that Captain America Civil War was not about Captain America. It was Avengers 2.5, right? I think so. Fits the timeline after, yeah, after uh, Age of Ultron. Yeah, basically. Yes. You said it, Civil War, right? Yeah. Civil okay. War. Yeah. Civil War is essentially was like not Avengers a Captain America 2. movie. 5 because I, which I like, that we're at this point in Marvel as a whole, that this person's movie doesn't mean like it's this person's movie. That's fair. Anybody can flow in and out and have big impacts on the movie. And you're right. Wanda is a huge part of this movie, which we knew going in. Like oh he, yeah, but I will say just from the little that I saw of her in the previous films, and I've watched every MCU movie with the exception. Did you watch Wandavision? I was just about to make. I was just about to bring that up. I have not seen Wandavision. Oh, and I so have, you were lost. No, I knew what was going on because I knew the plot points of Wandavision. Okay. Because I, I actually went in, I read them, so I knew what was oh going to happen. Oh my god, you haven't seen Wandavision? I didn't have. I didn't have Disney Plus. That's and the I, I refused. Best. I refused to pay for That's Disney the best, Plus. Uh, but. Best Marvel show. I've, I've heard I really good things my about favorite it. I've heard really good things about it. But anyway, um, aside from WandaVision, 
the the other spin-off series on Disney Plus that's MCU. It's about Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Have not seen that. Loki. Uh, again, I have, don't have Disney Plus. So okay. I have not seen Moon any Knight? of those. No. <laughs> have not seen any of those. But I have seen every mainline MCU film, either in the theaters or at, or thereafter, at least twice. Okay. I loved her character in this movie. So back to acting. She was great. <laughs> Absolutely great. Yeah, she was. And I, and I think that's, that was, thank you for bringing me back to that, because that was the point I was going to make, is that she got, the screen, she got the screen time she deserved in this film. I think she kind of gets you pushed aside. I, I'll, I will, give you, I'll yeah. give you my Disney Plus login. It's, it's good. It, it's, <laughs> I know it's good. I know that um, my wife's sister-in-law saw it. She loved it. But that's an endorsement that I absolutely will take like into uh, consideration because her sister has very good taste in deciding like what is and acting. Isn't, I would like, go good, eight. So. Eight, eight. It's as only far for as... Benedict Cumberbatch and and uh, Elizabeth Olsen. Okay, like everybody else might I drag it down to a seven. I was yeah okay. So I can't talk about the other character because that's a little bit of a spoiler. A little bit. A little bit. So I can't really talk about that. Totally brings it down for me. Like okay. six and a half. Okay. Easy six and a half exclusively because of that person's fault. You're talking about America Chavez? Yeah. I mean, can we say we, that up we, front? We know she's in the movie. She's in the marketing. Okay, yeah. Uh, no gravitas. She's really, a kid. Really bad. So is... She is poorly written. Really poorly written. All right. I'm going to put it no down No gravitas. A seven. Just really weak... Weak character, really weak. I don't know if it's entirely her fault. Maybe not. I haven't seen her anything else, so I don't know that. But, but I will we'll say, we'll give it a seven for now for the it's acting. Bad because in this one, I don't like it. I think it's bad. I don't think it's bad, but it's not as good as everybody else in the movie for sure. Sure. Okay. That's 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 fair. like it, she. It can look lesser than because everybody else is doing a really good job. Well, to put it this way, Ned's a side character in Spider Man. And I remember more about him than I do about America Chavez. And America Chavez is arguably the crux of the entire film. Fair enough. All right, but moving on. Uh, cinematography. This great. one's kind of tough because like, it's Marvel, so it's one great big CGI fest. Yeah, I mean, it's Which a high-budget film, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of good effects in the movie. It's not... It's, it's, to that point, effects and cinematography are kind of one and the same in yeah, this movie. Yeah, it's hard to break it apart. I will say the conflicting images... Because you won't really get one without the other. They're very much connected right. for this film. And this kind of brings in where I talked about where Sam Raimi has those Raimi moments. Where and he has a couple... They're, they're good. They're delicious. He has a couple of really just awesome moments where the tension and you see his horror film roots come in. And it's good. Those are the moments in the film where I genuinely was like, okay, this... That was good. I liked okay. that. That was well done and well played in a moment where it needed to be there. Where would you rate it then for cinematography? I think effects will kind of eight and like a half. Said, it plays into that, but I think effects would be higher in cinematography. So that yeah, lower. I would say eight and a half. And the only reason I say that is because again, there are three conflicting visions for this film, and it can't decide what it wants to be. Okay, you come down to an eight. Eight. Yeah. I'll give it an eight. Yeah. Okay. Editing. Okay. Now, this is where it runs into a little bit of a problem, because like you just pointed out, there's a couple different visions for this movie, so yeah. people have worked on it. Whether that was before or after principal photography, I am not entirely positive. However, we know it, it is kind of evident looking at it in certain instances, because there are some weird tonal shifts in yes. the movie that like don't quite match up. Like You can have those, but it's just it's a little too jarring. It is. At times. It, it definitely is. And I think some of that has to do with the editing. Some of it is just like the directing as a whole from everybody that worked on it. Yeah. Um, I think they got too far into it and they couldn't They couldn't just backpedal all the way and redo the whole thing. So they were like, Sam Raimi, come in and fix this. And he's like, okay, but I'm going to do this. And that being like, said, that's fine, but you have to do it this way. For as fast paced as this movie moves, which this like from the very first second... This movie starts, it does not stop. No, it give you freaking epilepsy if it you're trying to catch up with stop. the plot. It is just exposition, plot point after another. And, I, and it does is, all, like, as jarring as some of the tonal shifts might be, it does all flow narratively together It does. Well. It, it does. It, it does. does. The narrative is cohesive, and it does make sense from beginning to end. I so will the, not say that there's anything I can say to complain about that. But as far yeah. as editing is concerned, 
eight, seven and a half, really. I would say seven. Yeah, seven. I said seven is like, eight is nice generous. Like good. I'm trying to be generous with this film, okay? I really am. I, I try not to let personal feelings about woke messaging detract from non-related elements of a film because there's just nothing woke about cinematography when you film a movie you're filming a movie so i'm trying to just be objective about that and i know that goes without saying but seven's where i'm gonna land on editing editing okay yeah we can give it a seven uh score and soundtrack it's marvel the music's wonderful it's danny elfman and i felt like i was watching a cross between nightmare before christmas and it's, I think he did the original Batman, didn't he? The Michael Keaton Batman was Elfman? I want to say yes, but I'm not positive. Okay. I felt like I I'm was not watching... I'm I don't I, know for certain. <laughs> I felt like I was watching an Elfman movie because... Because you were? I didn't know that until the very end, but once I saw his name roll across credits, I was like... That makes that sense. That makes... Exactly. I yeah, had that... Yeah. Exactly. Um, Nine. Elfman does a good job of pairing with Sam Raimi's more dark film accents the same way that Elfman really compliments uh, the original director for the original Batman. I can't believe I'm forgetting this. He's one of my favorites. The 1989 Batman. Michael Keaton. Yes. Also Edward Scissorhands. Sleepy Hollow. I can't believe I'm forgetting I'm, his I'm, name. I'm, I'm Tim Burton. Tim Burton. There, there we go. They, they, we just, get they, they go together like PB&J. <laughs> um, this film is, is helped not detracted from by Elfman score, we nine. Get a nine. Nine, definitely, definitely go nine. All right, visual effects, um, space magic, and CGI. There are times in this movie where you can clearly tell the difference in some of the plates that are layered on top of each other, and they are not blended well. No. Most of it is very good, but there are some very specific scenes <laughs> that just that are similar to ones that Marvel's done in the past that have done been really good for whatever reason like you can just tell this there's a plate back here and then there's another one here and then it's just it's not it doesn't come together as well as some of them in the past and it's not yeah. all of them it's only a couple spots but it, it was enough to take me out of it uh, yeah i there was some there were some rough rough patches there for sure and I'm I there. There's another there's another YouTube channel that I love listening to, and he said it best. I'm getting tired of people throwing like sp- light spells at each other. It feels like Harry Potter. But I love Harry Potter. I just want fist fights, man. <laughs> I just want to see somebody's tooth get knocked out. And I will say that being said about this movie, there's some pretty visceral moments. This is one of the darker this MCU is a films. Violent movie. Very violent. Uh, and I liked that. It was Ooh. nice yeah. to see Marvel go past the kitty safe. Venom esque violence, where there's not a drop of blood anywhere, ever at all. There's, there's people are blood dying, in this movie. and you will yeah no you will see carnage. Not like gratuitous. It's not grotesque. And not like carnage, like in Venom to Let There Be Carnage. You won't actually see carnage. You'll see, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> this film definitely deserves a PG thirteen rating. It's not as it's just I I wish that it was darker than that, but it's Disney, so yeah, it's never gonna get. That dark. It'll never Arguably, be. Arguably, it doesn't have to. No, like, that's it, true. It, it doesn't have it to. It played be. well the way sure. it was. Um, so, where would you rate the rate the visual effects at? Seven. Seven. Yeah, it, it's definitely not the best MCU film as far as special effects I've ever seen. I would agree. I would agree with that second statement. Seven seems a little low, but I can go there. I, I think. I, the, I, I think seven. the first Guardians of the Galaxy was kind of the benchmark for me as far as visual effects are concerned. I think they did a really good job, and and it worked. Now, you can argue that they can get away with more over-the-top stuff. Right. They're literally traveling through dimensions. And like Jeremiah said, there's some spots where you can you can tell that this film was edited right up to the last minute, and it shows. There's some spots where it's rough. All right. Um, set deck, costume, and wardrobe. It's a Marvel movie. It's set in the real world, but with magic. It's good. America <laughs> Chavez's character looks like she walked off a middle school playground. She did. She's an alien. It doesn't make sense. No, she's her not. whole character doesn't make sense. But other than her, the rest of it was fine. the The set sets were good. Um, the costumes it's all normal. were great. I think some of the um, like it's part costuming of the and wardrobing was maybe better. 
um, just because they got to do more with it. Like, it's no yeah. secret multiverse of madness. Everybody knows we're going into different dimensions of different universes and stuff. Like, yeah. That's not a spoiler. They definitely could have done cooler stuff. But what they did they didn't, though. was cool. But what they did, they got that And they that got to right. do a little bit more than what they got to do previously in some of the films. So I do think the costuming and everything was good, especially when it came to uh, Doctor Strange, everything he got to do. Yeah, yeah. He was, his was really good. Yeah. And his outfits were really cool. You actually get to see him wear normal clothes for a change, which I was kind I of... Mean, he was wearing normal clothes in, like, uh, No Way Home. Was he? In No Way Home? I mean, for the first couple encounters. Okay. Maybe because he was, like, wearing his regular outfit, but then had his, I think, a hoodie on over it or that's, something. That's right. Okay. Like, All right. Kind of a weird mashup, but yeah. I, other, um, other than that, I was. It's just it's Marvel. You if you go in expecting to see a Marvel film as far as set and costume design, that's what you're going to see. Yeah, none of it is exceptionally outstanding, except for a couple spots, mainly the stuff with the Doctor Strange. Um, yeah, seven to eight. Where would you land? I'd probably say. I don't know. I've seen better costume designs, but there aren't a lot of characters that really needed over the top costumes, so say an eight. Yeah. Okay. I think I think Wanda's character as Scarlet Witch, they they did it right. They did a good job. It wasn't over the top, but it was also again, I'm not a comic book junkie, but it looked like something that was right off the pages of a comic book. And it it was cool. Audio mixing and sound design. Okay. Yeah. It was good. Eh, forgettable. I didn't really notice anything that just, like, launched off the pages at me. Yeah. Nothing stood out as being, like, oh, that was weird. Like, no. Like, Marvel movies are too good for that, where you get some movies where it's, like, certain lines fill out their ADR, and, like, this aren't mixed well back in, and certain yeah. things don't just play well when but, they're trying to mix everything back together with some of the effects and whatnot. It's, like, Marvel is above such things. Like, they just are. That doesn't happen with them. The dialogue um, meshes well with the action. You don't struggle to hear people over what's going on, which is something I notice a lot in physical movies. In people tend to yell, and you can't hear what's going on. Uh, yeah, you can still some, hear. Some movies are worse than others. You can that. still hear what's what's being said. Um, it, yeah, it's fine. Eight. Sure, I'll get fine. Eight's good. Okay. Directing. Which one? <laughs> That's the problem with this movie. <laughs> Which one? Um, because ultimately, we ended up getting Sam Raimi's vision for the movie. Yeah. For everything that he did, which is very enjoyable. Yeah, I would say if you... As a whole, it all kind of suffers due to a couple different visions that kind of get lost in the mix. Yep. Um, the original villain for the film from Scott... Derrickson. Thank you. Uh, Scott Derrickson's uh, I believe that's his name. <laughs> revision of it. Yeah, we're, we're going off this on rote memory, so please don't get too angry if we get it wrong. But um, the second director, I'll just go with that in case that's not actually Scott Derrickson, but it was supposed to be Nightmare. Not in this film. Not, not Nothing. That being said, there are plenty of villains for every Marvel movie that has ever happened that were supposed to be the first true, one true, but it doesn't happen. Sorry, what I, meant to, what I meant to go with off of that was that Kevin Feige... This is clearly meant to be a I did this type incidents where it literally says in the credits Kevin Feige production. He, I mean, he it, really it's it's ham fisted how the story was handed down to these guys and but, they had to tell the story they were told to tell. Like I don't know if that's entirely true, but also like it is a Kevin Feige production because Kevin Feige is the head of Marvel. Right, period. but it's also <laughs> this is the first time that I've seen that like plastered in big bold letters. I could be wrong about that. If I am, feel free to comment below. But I'm trying to think, I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've seen that. When he, because he's always been over Marvel uh, films. Since they've started, for the most part, um, minus the Sony stuff because that's not actually Marvel. That's right, it's Sony, an association um, with, with Marvel. Marvel. Um, but I want to say it's only somewhat recently where he's officially like the head of Marvel. Yes, like to the point where it's like he, I don't think that title would have been there for Eternals because Eternals was filmed, started filming like 
two years before. Right. I don't believe he was technically he was the creative. Right. He was the creative director. Director, for, but he like, was not the head Marvel of Marvel films. But now he oversees Marvel films and television, and like I think even portions of the comics and stuff. Like he's the head of Marvel. Yes. Um, yes. I think he's he's know, been appointed head of it. And I, so I think that might be why. Like this is the first film that from start to finish he has been right. And I don't think that's a good thing. I really there's a clear evidential trajectory that Marvel is going. And this is where we're going to have some conflict as far as where we see this film. Because once you... I'll go there in a minute. Okay. What, where are we okay. at as far as... Where, where are we at as far as... Uh, we've we've uh, scored, directing. Directing. directing is what we're on. Um, just because there's... Sam Raimi's good. Yeah. But just because there's a lack of... I hate movies. I hate it when movies don't have a singular vision. That, yeah, Where it's they one person's idea, then another person's idea is another person's idea. It's like it's bad enough when you have just the director and the executives. Yeah. But when you actually have different directors like come Agreed. in and out, it, the ideas and the direction and the tone, like we stated previously, can all kind of really suffer. Um, so I, I hesitate to give it like a positive rating for directing because, like, which parts of which director and whose ideas I'm gonna go rating. I'm gonna go with a six but that's, that's exactly not a shade, but thinking. that's not a shade against Raimi I, I, I yeah, do not I imply that at all I think I it's just I blame Feige I really do yeah I, I agree a six is where I'm sitting because I just don't know where else to go because it's like it's just, if it was a singular vision I could rate it more accurately just because right. it's kind of mixed together I don't really know which one I'm looking at Exactly. Like you know for sure what's Raimi, but you don't know what else is him or not. No, yet. that's that's a very good point. Is that when when this film shows a Sam Raimi moment, you know that's what you're watching, yeah. and it's so clearly obvious. And they're the best parts of it. <laughs> and when you're not, you don't know if it's the executives dictating stepping points to directors, and then directors fighting back. You don't. You don't, You just don't know. And it just kind of suffers from that. It's just. Kind of off-putting. Um, overall enjoyment of the film. Um, so, because of things that we haven't mentioned, because I can't, because they're spoilers. Right. We'll get more into depth with this later. Me, this our personally, initial rating. this was a six for me. This was... my I, I okay. was looking for something else to do three quarters of the way through this film and the only uh -huh. reason I stayed through it was because I wanted to give an accurate review uh -huh. but I, I wanted to just walk out because I was bored I've enjoyed every Marvel movie that I watched I reserve my criticisms as much as I can until after I've seen the film um, there have been a couple Marvel movies however that are so things just the stories are bad enough and they don't match up enough where it's like it takes you out of the movie I didn't have this in this movie. Did you go into it cold turkey? Did you have pre-expectations about it? I don't do that with movies. Okay, I went into it 100%. I didn't want to hear I, what I anyone else thought. I didn't want to want, I didn't want to go into it with a negative uh, presupposition. Right. I wanted to just sit in that seat and just have the film present itself to me. Yeah, that's and what then I have my to. own subjective review based off of that. Yeah, I want to try and listen to other people, on but whatever I am there for whatever the movie wants to do. When I go to a movie, to any movie, it's like, okay, tell me I the story you want to tell I feel like that's the only fair way to really review a movie yeah, is to I, do it, it that way. So, like, you can't go in there with too many kind of expectations on your end because right. that's unfair to the movie. It is. If the movie doesn't live up to your expectations, that's your fault, not the movie's. Right. That, go yeah. on the journey that the movie wants to take you on and then judge it And if it's on bad, that. it's bad. But if you just wanted it to be something other than what it is... So I enjoyed this movie, um, Seven. I I mean six and a half is really the best I I can I can I can do really it was I was bored I was really bored and lost I lost the plot about halfway <laughs> through it mainly through boredom because I just didn't care anymore I was really irritated by okay. certain characters I was really irritated by the way that certain other characters got just done dirty All right so that brings your initial score to seventy two. 72 all right and mine to 73 for now we're gonna have different scores on this one and we're gonna do these slightly differently than we do our other film reviews it won't be where that much different. it won't be too much different but we're gonna get into the spoilers section and i'll preface this right up front 
you're probably going to be triggered by some of the things that I have to say. Jeremiah is much more level across the board than I am. I am absolutely just, I, I will not pull my punches when it comes to the way that I see how this film did certain things. And we will disagree. We will and, disagree. Uh, we actually, I <laughs> I remember the <laughs> I walked out of the theater and I texted him and I said, are you sure you want to do this movie? I don't want to have a fight on camera. Um, and we were like, okay, we'll just, we'll approach it. Now we'll we have the, to do it. Though. Yeah. We'll do the best we can with it. But um, we're going to have very different end conclusions. So just know that up front. But we're going to get into spoilers now. Yeah, so our initial ratings are 72 for you, 73 for me. Um, now we're going to get into spoilers and give our final ratings at the end. Um, okay, just go into whatever the biggest thing is that you want to talk about. I know you don't okay. like America Chavez. I know a couple reasons why, and I think you're wrong. <laughs> but go ahead. So I'll start with the, with the least severe infraction, and I'll get to the worst. Okay. So for me, probably the thing that irritated me the least but was definitely something that I felt should have been done better cameos in this film it's the multiverse of madness they hinted at it in spider in spider-man uh, no way home it's limitless they, possibilities and what we got I think they oh, go ahead what we got was just it was cheap it felt like it it felt like this part of the film was given the least amount of attention possible and it was done for the cheapest amount of money possible. And who they got, since we're talking about spoilers, you will see Reed Richards as... Uh, Played by John Krasinski. Yay. Yes, I will say John Krasinski. <laughs> I would love to see him play Reed Richards which almost, in The Fantastic Four. Which almost guarantees that he is actually going to be Reed Richards in The Fantastic Four, which means that because uh, who did... Um, Oh, who just stepped away from directing Fantastic Four? I can't remember. I can't remember who it was the guy that just did the Spider-Man movies. Like, like he has one of the, like the third highest grossing film of all time or something like that. Like very. No Way Home's amazing. Yeah, very successful, very good. But he just stepped away because he wants to do other stuff than Marvel. That's like, fine. Okay, cool. Fair I enough, will my say dude. Krasinski... But now it means John Krasinski might be able to come in as director as well and direct Fantastic. That would be cool. That would be, be way cool. Reed Richards. I love John Krasinski as an actor. I think he's a great person too. I think yeah. that he's got just one of the best ethics in Hollywood. And that I think was the that he's best got... cameo of the movie. Was like... Hands down, guaranteed. Yes, yes because that almost agree. guarantees that we will get him in the future. I will say though, I don't think John Krasinski got enough time to develop the character. He had like less True, than five but I don't minutes think he was of screen to. time. Maybe not. Maybe because not. Because spoiler. Um, so we everybody was kind of you know going back and forth on whether what we were seeing was like the multiversal Illuminati or some kind of combination of that, like the Council of Reeds or something like that. Um, It's the Illuminati, not the multiversal Illuminati, because all of these characters are specifically from their own universe, not others. So that's an important distinction. It's not the multiversal Illuminati, it's just the Illuminati, which is in lieu of what we had as S.H.I.E.L.D., basically. Right. Um, and they all die. All of them are dead. Yep. And, and Which totally makes sense when you're just in the multiverse, and it's like, hey, these are just random characters, no, but I have, dead. But I have beef with how it was done. I think I think John Krasinski's character, he got done dirty bad. <laughs> really bad. I think... He got, he got unraveled. Good Lord. But it was like one of the most... This guy's supposed to be... He's hes on the council, right? He's supposedly the smartest man alive. And he's Mr. Fantastic. Just poof, gone. Just... For, I didn't understand why they took a character that is so well-beloved as Mr. Fantastic. And they gave these cheesy line about like, Oh, you were training in the 60s. And it's just really kind of off the cuff like that. And the joke was... It would land flat if you weren't versed in in marvel comic release dates which a lot of people i know going into this are but me as a normie i didn't care um which the joke wasn't for me i understand that so i i'm not really gonna i'm not really gonna detract from that too much but he couldn't fight at all period and the reason why i say that is because the two other characters that do get fight sequences i don't understand it's just an arbitrary decision between them and them i'll get into more of that i'll get into one more of them of that. i agree with one of them okay, that's I fair. disagree with. That's fair. That's fair. I, I'll give because you that. Because all of all the people that died as fast as they did, 
Yes, because they are fighting Wanda Maximoff, who they have said is the Scarlet Witch, which is a like Nexus being who has the ability to only one in existence. Control. Yeah, right. She's like a one of a kind kind of thing. Well, she create she exists in like every multiverse, but she's right. like is the most powerful magic user that we know of. Right. Like that has been very clear. Where it makes sense for her to just like it was too quick. Kill a couple of them. Yeah, it was too quick though. And then Tuning Fork Dude, like that was funny. Tuning Fork Dude <laughs> died. Maybe he should have lasted longer, but it was funny. It was. Uh, funny. I actually think Reed Richards probably dies the fastest out of any of those. Anyway. Oh yeah. I actually think he's like he's not a very powerful character. Sorry, Mister Fantastic is cool. He's not that powerful. They he's not gonna stand I, up to the Scarlet Witch or like Captain Marvel fine, or people maybe. that were actually created using Infinity Stones. Sorry. He's just not. But still, it was too quick, and I think it was done for a reason that we will disagree on. Both of the male characters, dead within five seconds. The other two remaining counselors, which there are more members of the council that are male, right. but they which are involved is, in different um, sections. The last two, we have Captain Carter. And Professor X was well, the other male character that was I was alluding to. Oh, the other male, male character that... Was on the council. Like, Professor X is on the council. Yes, yes. Which was really cool because Patrick Stewart is in this movie. Yeah, but they all died. Mordo, Mordo's on the council. Yes, he Mordo survives. as well. Yes, he does. I mean, it was kind of weird. He, he survives like all of it because he doesn't. In the crack and because then he, he doesn't end up fighting Scarlet Witch. He He's fought Doctor occupied Strange. with Doctor Strange. As well. Right. He just Doctor Strange just pisses him off and insults him and then gets into a fist fight to remove because the they have magic the cuffs restricting on, which take their magic away. So they're just like kicking and punching each other, which is fun. And it had there's a bit of there was a bit of back and forth, and it was it was nice to see him. Back in a Doctor Strange movie because to I was tell edgy for it. Yeah, yeah, and it, I just don't understand why it's taken so long for them to put him back in. He's kind of built up as being kind of an, a, well, an because a it villain took this of long his universe. To get Doctor Strange too. That's a fair point. This is the first like, direct sequel to the original to get Doctor get back Strange. Into the actual like magic war side of things. That's fine. Okay, extent. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. That's it was nice to see him in the film. Professor X did him dirty, just like Mr. Fantastic. I mean, he's in a he goes into uh, Wanda's head and attempts to do kind of like a Inception kind of rescue, yeah. and just gets his nap snacked. And it it's dumb. We're talking about when neck the, snapped, neck snapped. Thank you, <laughs> neck <He's>, snapped. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, no, I, I'm 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 on a roll here, so my my English may not keep up with me. Uh, he is one of the most powerful psychic users. Also, yes. one of the Nexus beings, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong they about that. They had to kill him. They did. Well, is, maybe. The, because he's there. Because he's there and he's that powerful, he either wins or loses. Uh, that's a fair point. He, he would either win or lose. They kind of set it so up to where So they kind of wrote themselves into a corner that did. way where he has to die. They did. I agree that it was kind of cheap. There should wait. have been a power but struggle. He He's fought down or at I least mean, there was, faced there was a off against the power Phoenix. Struggle. Ment but that was an entirely mental power struggle as well. He That's the only fight he can like do. like six seconds. That's the only fight he can do. Red Cloud comes up. We get a jump scare. Sam Raimi was really cool. And then he's just dead. Drops dead, drooling on the oversized power chair. And I was like, oh my gosh, I hate what they're doing right now. But, like, tell me you did not see it a mile away. I did. I hope they for it to be a little bit more like, of a battle, though. All these people are... All of these pipe people are either going to survive... Or all of them are going to die. Right, and, and it goes one of two ways. That's fine, but they should have, they should have allowed for the strengths of the characters to play out a little bit more. Because they give way too much, way too much emphasis. Maybe to Captain I Carter. Think, I, I don't mind that they didn't. I did. I didn't mind so much they didn't because we're going to get it later maybe maybe like we're going to get more of those characters i hope so i really do i would later love on. to see a john krasinski or directed or at least co-directed fantastic four be amazing right whether it's not those specific actors i think john krasinski will be back i hope so i really really sincerely do i think he's a great actor i love his movies but yeah. anyway I, I, getting back to what i was trying to say yeah i really think it was done for political messaging and i think that you can track this with statements from kevin feige himself he has absolutely adopted this female-centric vision of the MCU, and it's super, super obvious. I mean, we have didn't the new Thor that. movie is going to feature uh, Natalie Portman as Thor. Yeah. And Thor has been sidetracked in his own movie, which I it hasn't come out yet, so I'm not going to give an opinion on that. But I will say just from the promos that we've seen, it seems like it's pretty self-evident that what they're doing, and from the Eternals, and then from this movie... 
the whole point of this movie is that uh, I'll talk about it a little bit more because there are certain beats that it hits in, in later parts, but it's not overtly woke. I won't. I'm not going to say that. It's not like you're watching an Amy Schumer Netflix special. This isn't feminism 101. It's more like it's woven throughout the tapestry of the film, See, and there is absolutely a MCU dominant vibe throughout the entirety of the film from beginning to end. I. I know you're going to disagree. Completely disagree. I know you are. I completely disagree because, like, I think you're looking at it from a very narrow-minded perspective. So, and here's why. Well, can I can I get through the, the okay. points first, go and ahead. then you can go full bore and go ahead. give your counterpoints to my points. So, um, again, it's probably gonna. I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say out what I think about it because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pretend like I didn't. You can't unsee it once you've seen it. Um, Aside from the two character, two male characters just getting, or three male characters getting offed without a second thought, and then Captain Marvel, which arguably makes sense because she is Captain Marvel, and she is very powerful. Yes, lasts the longest. Didn't really have that big of a beef with that. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. Gets killed. Captain Carter, on the other hand, is arguably just as important as Mister Fantastic. I mean, the, the power level is. Fair. Pretty much there. Fair. Lasts for way too long. And I think it's just to push a narrative. You have three female superheroes duking it out on screen. And they really, it really felt forced. It really felt like they were really trying hard to get nothing but women on the screen. Just for the sake of women being on screen. Because men dominate the film. The the, the superhero Captain scene Carter, way too much. Captain apparently. Carter, I will give to you. Where it's like... Yeah, given her strengths and powers, like she probably should have died. A lot Still a cool death scene. Still a cool death really scene. Cool. I, she I, gets chopped in half with the shield. Yep, that was cool. <laughs> I was like, mm, fair. That was good. Yeah, but I'll move on. Should from, have died a little bit faster. I'll move on from that because that that really is all there is to say about that. It wasn't overtly woke. It was just like mm, I see what you did there. The biggest thing for me, the two biggest points, mm-hmm. the biggest beats that stuck out that were just I face palmed in the film. I was like, I can't believe they did that. When America Chavez, two two scenes involving her, which I hated her character. I think she's just stupid. I think the character is dumb. If you look into the comic sales, she doesn't sell well. She's just a woke character for the sake of being woke. And they stuck her in there because diversity in women. Um, the, the, The segment where she just mocks Doctor Strange because he doesn't speak Spanish. And I don't care about bilingual characters. Here's the issue. They set her up as an alien from another universe. And if you look into where she's from, she's from the utopian dimension. Depends on how it depends on which version of your char- of right. her character you read into. There's I think there's three main ones. Um, one where she is uh, born and raised in uh, born to Colombian parents, I believe, or I believe. South, South South American. Forgive me, my ethnicity is uh, incorrect. But uh, she 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 grows up in America. She's a human being basically. She's from Earth. Uh, six. One six or six three six. Six one six is okay. She's from our universe's Earth. Then there is the version of her that is an alien, and that kind of goes back and forth. The Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness version of America Chavez is an alien. Yes. Why does she assume that everyone, regardless of dimension, just understands and speaks Spanish? Right. That makes no sense. And I agree. That moment does not make sense, and it makes even less sense given what she says later on in the film. Because she, right, she just assumes that and kind of, you know, puts him down for not speaking Spanish. And then as soon as they start hopping multiverses, she tells him the first rule of hopping multiverse uh, dimensions is you know nothing. Right. Which kind of like, well, why did you make assumptions about the way people talk or things like that? when you got there so it just I'll tell you exactly why it was to it was just to put uh minority people groups because Spanish is a language that is not as commonly present in North America to put it to put it on in in the spotlight because reasons I think that was why that's really all the reason why you can do that but I think there's more tasteful ways to do it yeah way more tasteful ways you just do it yeah you just do it or you just walk up to a street vendor who happens to be from the same place as you and you riff back and forth. Makes perfect sense. Nobody would have batted an eye. It just comes out of nowhere and it's so cringy. And I just, I hated it. And then Wong like chips back and forth and I'm like, oh, of course you speak Spanish. <laughs> that It just, it was dumb. It didn't make any sense. The second one was free food. 
they're walking through the second universe they come to, and she makes this offhanded comment about, yeah, food's free in every other universe. Well, I wonder why not free, uh, food's not free in yours. And it was like, maybe, you know, <laughs> it's just... But because we're not communist, like who? who but do you... she's immediately corrected because, like, like it, all that backfire. Right, 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 right. Because she's actually just lying. Well, she could be, but she still made the comment and stated it as an absolute fact. And she also just says that she's been to universe. like seventy plus universes, though. Well, it, it's not. It's not stated it's that not way. Free, like I think that's bad writing because I know right after that they meet. Uh, or she just Bruce lying and character. all she does is and she's just stealing food all the way. Well, it could be. It could be. But all I think I think the reason that that line was in there was it's just socialism one hundred and one. Free food. Food should be free. People suffer every day. It's absolutely true. Being born in America doesn't give you a right to like exist as a self. Uh, like you, you don't you don't get special privileges. Because you're American, you were born in America, therefore you have access to those things. It's not a political channel, but they made the point, so I'm going to talk about it. Food's not free because you either have to enslave people to make the food, or you have to incentivize them somehow, and the only way of doing that is with a threat of violence or with monetary compensation. You, you just There's no way around it. It's either capitalism or communism, and it has no place in a film about multi-dimensional travel they should have done the star trek approach and gone with like a more utopian style you know people don't really subsist on money anymore because we moved past that and explain it in a way where it makes sense in universe that i could go with they don't do that they just make an offhanded comment about food being free because reasons which then they get immediately corrected by papa pizza who's played by bruce campbell yeah who has one of the best roles in this movie <laughs> For the whole two minutes he's in it. But it's great. And then the end credit scene, Bruce Campbell beating himself with his own fist. Yeah. And then goes, It's pretty great. It's over. It's good. It, it was funny. It was good. And it's a Sam Raimi moment and it was good. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Um, there are more woke points that I will get into that are like the 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 worst ones in my opinion. <laughs> but I'll let you kind of take it from there because I've riffed for a, a hot minute now. Okay. And I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> so I I did not bump into most of what you did. Okay. Um, I'll try and work backwards if I can remember all the points you made. Is it either um, that you just disagree outright or that you just didn't see it? The one... Okay, let's, I'll try and work backwards. Okay. So the whole free food thing is kind of played for laughs. I didn't take it as um, it, the film trying to spin any kind of narrative on trying to promote communism or a utopia, um, if the food was actually free in most universes that she uh, actually visited, okay, that doesn't mean anything to me. And if it wasn't, which is what I'm more likely to believe because she makes the comment, be like, she makes the comment that the food is free. Right. Then we find out it isn't because she's confronted. Right. The only reason she's confronted is because she stops moving. It's not out of, like, just based off of that encounter and what they tell me, she goes to universes and she just takes food, food walking down the street, assuming it's free because that's free where she comes from. That makes her a terrible human being or a terrible person in general. But I think that's just bad writing. I think they literally, within the span of two minutes, forgot the point they just made and went with the Bruce Campbell point because Sam Raimi stepped in. And just decided to make a joke. Yeah, so that's how I took that whole interaction. Like, okay, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, and she's just stealing food, and it's kind of just played for laughs, and either way, I don't really care. Okay. Like, I didn't run into it as like, oh, they're trying to make a political commentary on socialism is better because then food is free. Like, Which it's not, but Historically, that's, not that's actually anything but accurate. Yeah. That, I think that's I think that's the ultimate irony of it is that the jokes on them because <laughs> like I don't know what they're trying to make because it doesn't make sense for them to do so because they're wrong. That's where my brain goes. Um, back to and I can what give was the it. I can, you made before that uh, the fight just all oh, all three. Okay, so yeah, Captain Carter. I think should have died sooner because she's Way not sooner. that powerful. Um, I can understand like looking at it from the perspective of oh they're just trying to get all the female characters on screen to fight each other this is not the most egregious version of this no it's not this is it's mild and it could be totally and it, overlooked and it plays it plays to the narrative 
inside the story which itself. Which is why I put it at the very bottom. Which is why I didn't bump into it. Like, it's not... I didn't... It didn't come across like, oh, they're just trying to get women in the final fight because you have the men fighting over here and you have the women fighting over here. Right. They just kind of segregate them. And the people that die soon probably should have died soon. I don't think they would have lasted that long. I think Captain no. Carter is the only one that stuck around longer than she probably should have, but she eventually dies in a really cool way anyway. Right. Um, the fight between her and Captain Marvel, that makes sense. That makes sense to go on a little bit longer. I'm glad that Wanda won, but then again, of course she's going to win because she's the main character in the movie. She's not a cameo. That's true. Um, That's true. Nobody else, like everybody you encounter is just. I actually going like that that version of Captain Marvel too. I hate Brie Larson. Monica Rambeau. Yeah, she's no. great. No, no, not Monica. Uh, her 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 the her mom. What's her name? I I, I don't I don't remember. But oh I my goodness, why can't I remember? Because yeah, it's it's. Captain Marvel's friend. Yes. In in the movie, I forget her name, but it's Rambo, something Rambo, because Monica Rambo is a character that you don't know. No, I don't. Because she's in WandaVision. Right. Um. But yeah, not her, but her. But I, I liked her mother. as Captain Marvel in in the brief little stint that she got. I'd watch a Captain Marvel movie with her in it. I specifically avoided, went out of my way to not watch Captain Marvel because of Brie Larson. <laughs> she's obnoxious and she's a shrew. I can't stand her. I, I just as a person, and I, I just won't watch the film because she's in it. Yeah, I I didn't have a problem with Captain Marvel. It's, I, well, I, like I just the movie Captain with Marvel. Larson. Like, okay, but I, I liked this version of That's, of her. I thought that she was better in the four minutes of screen time that she was in than the entirety of clips and exposition that I've read and seen from Captain Marvel with Brie Larson. Mm-hmm. I, just, I would watch a Captain Marvel movie with this version of Captain Marvel. It was okay. Good. Just like I thought. Uh, the, Fair enough. What's the name of the actress who plays uh, Carter? Agent Carter. She's great. Oh, that's. I don't remember her name. I don't remember. She's her name. great. I I've always uh, enjoyed her character throughout the. Haley Atwell. Thank you. She's I great. Be- I believe that's correct. And there aren't. Uh, like I said, the reason why I put that one at the, like the very bottom of my like woke list of sins is because it really wasn't a huge deal. It's just irritating. Because like, it was just there to do it. It didn't make sense the way that it progressed. All of I them had it, to die. I think die. it did make enough sense. It, to be overlooked, yes, without careful scrutiny. But I know, and you can read, this isn't just my opinion, you can you can go read statements from both Disney in the press lately and from Kevin Feige himself. They are absolutely advancing a woke agenda and they are attempting to deconstruct both male characters, which I will get into, that... I hated that they did this to Doctor Strange. Okay, well, let's get really, into it. Let's... He's wrong about everything all the time. And he is the cause of every problem that happens in every universe that he goes to. He is the ultimate or original sin, no matter which one they go to. And he's told that by every woman at every opportunity. Really? He's remi- Yes, yes. He's reminded constantly by America Chavez that he is uh, untrustworthy, a bit of an idiot... He's constantly being corrected by her. A child, I might add. Can, can I finish? Just get to the end. Okay. okay. And then his love interest is constantly correcting him as well. In some instances, it makes perfect sense. He would be in a new universe. He wouldn't know certain things. Not talking about that. Those are logical extensions that nobody really bats an eye about. It's when we're talking about things that neither one of them have a pre-existent knowledge of, but just assume because A... He's a man, and therefore he's wrong. And B, he's Doctor Strange, which makes him just an easy person to just blame for all the problems. But they are all proven wrong. Ultimately, in a few instances... With, okay, with a few exceptions. You are you are correct, with a few exceptions. Like, because that's the entire gist of the Illuminati that we encounter, is they make the statement, it is when, in our experience, that the most dangerous being in the universe is, is Dr. Strange. Strange. But they're Then Professor they're X wrong. gives him access to the, the special book that he needs right. and tells him, I think we can trust this one. Right, they're 100% wrong. Like, they just had a bad experience with one dude and judged everybody off of that. Like, and I they're think... actually wrong. And a lot of people's encounters with Dr. Strange are based off of a single encounter that they had with an evil Dr. Strange. Potentially, or these so-called bumbling idiot, selfish Doctor Stranges, like the very first one we see, 
who attempts to right, do a greater good one or the latter one that's been using the dark hold in his reality that's kind of crumbled. Yeah. Like both of them are instances of Doctor Strangers that have failed, but we're watching the version that doesn't. Right. That actually like I is think proving everyone wrong you're, by you're the correct. end that I think he and I think that's Sam Wayne trustworthy one and I, I, I could be falsely accrediting this to him, but I absolutely think that that was Sam Raimi attempting to deliver the character somewhat. See, and give when him I look at a movie, if I see a character that is a stupid character or written poorly, I don't assume it's a statement by the filmmakers. And everybody does this, and I don't understand why. I think the it's only reason... It's a take reason... that people have. It's like, if there's a woman in a film, and she's written poorly or given one-dimensional, everybody will say that... It's oh, sexism. Oh, this movie or... is sexist. It hates women. And if right. you do the same thing with a man, everybody says, oh, this movie is sexist. It hates men. It's just woke. You're correct. Neither one are true. Well, sometimes... Like, sometimes it... you can just write a character that is that character, because Unless... that's who it needs to be for the story to happen. 100% true. Unless... Peripherally, in the real world, you have directors or creative, in, creative people with control, like uh, Kathleen Kennedy, making overt statements, like Pixar's done lately, about not only advancing uh, trans content for kids on Disney Plus, mm -hmm. but proactively trying to seed it into every single thing they touch. You can't unhear or unsee that. So I don't pay attention to that. So and and see, I do. I, I know what's going. I, on. I watch. So much uh, newsreels, and I read tweets all the time because I'm really invested in in these in these properties because mm -hmm. I care. You, you know, it's just what I grew up on. Disney is something that my parents put me in front of since I was a little kid. I can quote Robin Hood and Sword in the Stone, and I know the songs. Anyway, the point and the reason why I brought up those woke points in this film is because I know that's what they were trying to do because that's what they said they were trying to do. Okay. So that's the only reason I bring that up because I think otherwise you'd be fair. People just kind of jump at shadows because they just want to be offended. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of people do. They just want to be offended. And I, I think the left does a, a, a much – they play a much bigger part of that. Conservatives really just go, eh, I don't like that. But you, you just typically don't yeah, see some, that. Some. some I would say the majority, the vast majority of people you see online freaking out happen to be of the left persuasion. And that's, by and large, true across all social media. Perhaps, but the majority of people actually don't care. You're right. A lot of the normies, people that just go to the movie theaters and sit down, you were absolutely right. The vast majority of opinions are from a very tiny vocal minority yeah. that, for some reason, everybody pays attention to. Uh-huh. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Anyway, um, the probably the two, the, the biggest one for me, the, the absolute worst one is not the one you're thinking of. That one did bother me, but it wasn't that big of a deal that I kind of just was like more just irritated more than anything. The two moms? Yeah, the witchcraft. That really bothered me because, yeah. So I, I, I knew this was kind of catch you by surprise. So just uh, I really can't stand it when films play around with real world uh, metaphysical things. Like, I absolutely believe in the supernatural. I believe that uh, seances and witchcraft are a real problem and they have real consequences and you don't want to mess with it. Okay. They give some allusions to some real world witchcraft, um, astral, proje astral projection specifically, that I think is just not something that they had any business playing around with because it's a real thing that real people do. Yeah, no, it's, it's a real world thing. They don't have any business messing with. And as a Christian, that's the worldview that I hold. And so when I see okay. people messing with demonic things, it really, really irritates me because I know, I know that there's going to be people who watch this who think that I'm crazy, who don't think that there's anything to it and go, yeah, well, they show death on screen. They show people getting shot. I think the difference is, is that you can just automatically know that shooting people is wrong and therefore you shouldn't do it. It's not in a context where it's like, oh, yeah, you should go out and shoot people. Whereas <laughs> right. the context with witchcraft is it's cool, it has cool effects, and you should either A, dabble in it because it gives power, or there are positive side effects that for the right people under the right circumstances can do good things. Well, their entire point is that using the dark hold bears a toll on whoever uses it, that you shouldn't do those things. Because of the effects that, that. That is true. That is true. However, Doctor Strange does it 
yes, with he good intentions. Yes. And he even makes that point where he's like, well, I'm going to do it anyway because I need to in order to get this effect he does. out of it. And I don't care what the context is for it. Witchcraft is just not something that I think should ever be something that, that children should be a witness to. I really don't. I feel like it's something that from personal experience, I know people who've had direct con have had direct interactions with the demonic realm and right. with witchcraft in general. And it's just, you do not want to mess with it. I don't care how, how cool you think it is. The price is never I'm worth a, it. I'm of two minds on this, I guess. And on one side, I kind of agree with you because I too believe it to be a very real thing. That being said, I don't I don't shy away from the portrayal of it in films because of it. Okay, keep going because I, I might agree with you, but elaborate further because I want to make sure that I'm being consistent like, with my with my worldview. You know, like Marvel is portraying it in such a way where you're right, it comes off as like cool and stuff like that. As do many things. So, like Harry Potter would be a good example. I wouldn't necessarily agree that are actually cool. It's meant for entertainment's sake. So like Harry Potter... Like, it's not real. Like, it's real, but what they're portraying is is not real. real. That's That's the thing is that in this, the astral projection and the possession element of it is way too realistic. It is. It is. That is what bothered me. Right. But I don't... Just my opinion. Even though I agree it's real, I don't shy away from those things in films and like, then they take it a step further and then like the demons literally come out of his soul that was cool it was cool it was a cool effect but then they straight up tell him that possessing dead bodies is forbidden yeah. and you shouldn't like we're gonna drag you to hell yeah. essentially yeah. they don't say that specifically it's implied yeah yeah and that again it was cool to watch and that was the that was the part of it that kind of pulled me back into the movie because it's fiction because Demons don't do that. Demons don't look like that, and they don't they don't act like that, and they don't make idle threats. Um, and so I, I I'm uncertain as to what those being. It was kind of left ambiguous, but I'm just going with demons as a placeholder because okay. that was clearly what they were fair meant enough, to fair like. Enough. But then Doctor Strange is told to use the spirits to take more power and to use that to turn the battle against Scarlet Witch. Right. That was where I was like, all right, that that's where I drew the line because use that's that's that is part and parcel witchcraft one oh one is using the power of demons for your own gains, initiative and gains. And I know that I'm I'm probably reading into a Marvel movie way too much. I know it's probably wasn't the intention, but it's there and I can't unsee it. And I know that there will uh, there will be other people who have had real experiences with this stuff who will agree and will say that it's 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 actually closer to reality than a lot of people think fair enough but the portrayal of it is still fake it is fake it, it is absolutely fake i'm not going to say that if, if you know there's a dark hold and if you read it you'll be able to do those things that's ridiculous that, that's my stance on it where like just the portrayal of it is still fake it's fictional stuff that draws from the real world right like all fiction does and I can't harp on this one thing for being close to reality as because I don't think that witchcraft and things are things that shouldn't be displayed in film just because they're dangerous or wrong. If in the right if done in the right context, I agree hundred percent. Like the X Files, for instance, has a lot of witchcraft in it. I thoroughly enjoyed that show and the context that it's in is always in the it's always based on reality first of all which okay. really spooks some people i know but it's always in the context where it has horrible consequences it's never good and it's always something to be stayed away from and that's the only reason that i will accept it on that premise but in this instance it's a little bit too like for the greater good and that's which what bothered me makes it all the more unrealistic in reality and like again even Wong tells him that there is a toll to be paid right. for using the dark hold, and that will come to pass. Right. And we see some of the effects of it already happening in the first end credit scene. But of they this almost movie. they almost appear to be positives. A bit, 
Like, almost like he's going to master it and then use it for, again, the greater good. And that just Maybe. ultimately was a little too ambiguous. I, It really bothered me. The homosexual stuff, it just is what it is. It's everywhere now. It's in every film, it seems like. Um, or in every TV show. Yeah. And I get that's how they that's how they win. They desensitize you to things. I'm never going to be okay with it. I'm never going to say that it's something that uh, is... Yeah, it should be there. But then again, I was never going around saying that you know, straight uh, depictions were, um, yeah, we need we need more hetero lovemaking scenes. Like, there's not enough sex in movies. I have never understood why they put sexuality at the forefront of movies. I get that it's a story element and a narrative point. I guess it can depend on the movie. It can, but also... But I, I agree why with you, though? though. Why, though? It, and in this movie, it was just, it's forced because... America Chavez was written in 2011 mm -hmm. and is written to be a woke character. Like, yeah. that is the definition of America Chavez. The name is stupid. The character's stupid. The fact that she has two moms doesn't make her stupid. It's the fact that it was written that way and the way it was portrayed. Like, I don't hate gay people. I've worked with gay people my whole life. Mm -hmm. I even considered some of them to be my friends. They were great people. I'd never say anything about them, specifically that because you are gay you are not worth being my friend. That's right. That's hateful and wrong. And as a Christian, I'm called to love people, not hate people. Yeah. But I'm not going to say that sin is not sin. Just like if you had a gambling problem or if you had a porn addiction, I wouldn't call that out either. It's it's all the same. Right. Like I'm not going to just sit here and pretend it's not because it's unpopular. That's fair. But it wasn't the most disliked thing about the movie. It was just like, <laughs> really? I just I just looked at the I just looked at the screen. And I was like, really? That, Okay, fine. All right. Do and it thing. just was another it was just another point in the movie that just kind of detracted from it, but those are all the reasons why I really didn't like it. I mean, that's spoilers. I think that the actress has she has no ability. I think she's terrible. I don't think she gave lots of she was given a lot to work with either. Probably not. Like America her, Chavez is a her, really weak character in the Marvel universe. And in the movie like she's she's the MacGuffin. Uh, yeah, no. Absolutely, she is just a means to an end, and, and like she's it makes treated sense as such. for like why certain people want her for certain things yeah. for her power. Like, yep, it makes sense. Like, okay, but like she's not really given a whole lot to do. No, she, no, she isn't. No, and I really feel like she has all of the like complexity of a Care Bear and <laughs> like a all right, like a Disney pop star, like almost like a Selena Gomez kind of. Thing where it was like the Disney XD, you know, show so, let me ask kid you actors. Though. It just didn't. It just didn't. How work did for you me. read the end of the movie? Which part? Scarlet Witch's supposed whatever. death. I, think I don't the, even think it was I a think supposed gonna, death. Like she, she ain't dead. I think there's no gonna, way she dead. Well, I think the the Wanda Maximoff that clearly has the Scarlet Witch powers from the other universe is either going to a. Come well, back as all of them are Scarlet Witch. This are Scarlet Witch, not dead, hundred percent not dead. Oh, I I don't know. I mean, like you yeah, see the she red collapses light. the 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 temple or whatever. And you see the red mist explosion, and it's supposedly like the power going out or whatever. But I didn't interpret it that way. I interpreted that as like her she protecting like herself. Disappeared. Like, yeah. Who like, knows? Who who knows? Because she can do that. That's true. She can straight up just and disappear. Right. Like so. Watch I mean, Wandavision. She. Yeah, we, does that specific. It could be a possibility that she just dips out to go, like, find Vision. Right. Like, she destroyed the original, like, Darkhold. Like, yep. that's what the Darkhold was. Like, in so, every universe, so by she, the way. She destroyed it in every universe. Yes. Which, okay, cool. But I didn't interpret that as her sacrificing herself in any way. Yeah. Because there's no... I don't It's implied. It's implied, but not stated. I don't even know if it's implied. Like, I just don't feel like that was, like, her making a sacrifice moment. It just didn't play that way for me. I don't think it was supposed to. I hope not. So. I think that, uh. Like, I, I, think, I, I think some people are kind of interpreting it that way. Where, like, I her sacrifice did. at the end, it's like, I didn't get that at all. It's like, she did the right thing by destroying the dark hold. Cool. And then she just kind of pieced out and is yeah. going somewhere. I really hope from, because you're right, this movie sets up a lot of other movies. And I think that's why a lot of people would take away from it, because it's kind of like setting up future films. Right. So in the grand scheme of like the MCU, I like this movie more because it sets it up future and properties sets up that could be really cool. Stuff. I really hope America Chavez just gets a straight to Disney Plus like ten episode season that I don't just think she'll get that. 
I hope so. I, I think, well, I hope so, so that people can see that it's a bad one-dimensional character that's written for the purposes of just they advancing write political well. agendas. They can't. The character they doesn't have... Well, they'd have to rewrite a lot of stuff about the character from the, the lore and the comic book stuff that I was reading to they, prepare they, for they this. They can make her interesting. They could. It would be hard. It'd be a hard sell. Like, any of their characters, they have the ability to make interesting. Not saying Or they the will. ability to make them suck, which right. they've done with a number Even, of them. You know, previously well written characters they can make suck. Like it just depends on who is. Doing it's true. It. That's that's a fair point. I'll reserve judgment until like something like that actually becomes a thing. Because like I don't. I don't know where isn't. I don't know where America Chavez is supposed to show up next. If she's showing up in the Marvels or not. Yeah, I think she's supposed to be in the Marvels along with uh, Miss Marvel, uh, Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel, and. And then uh, I think Monica Rambeau is going to show up in that one. She, I think they might introduce She Hulk at some point too. That's I know that that's slated for okay. a future thing at some point. I remember you right. I remember hearing that at some point that was like a. I don't. I don't know, know when that's going to be a thing. But okay, cool. I th I think my overall thoughts for this for this movie it's a it, because of all of those woke points. Anything good about this movie, including the end, like Evil Dead joke, <laughs> where. Right, Bruce, Bruce Campbell, Campbell just finally fighting stops. his own hand, yeah. like hitting himself. It's like it's such a good callback. And, and he's like, like "It's if you've over." Seen Evil Dead, like you, you, you get, get it. it. Where Ash has to like cut his hand off because it's like choking him out. It's great. It's yeah, great. and Sam Raimi, it just Bruce Campbell. It's great. Yeah, uh, those things can't save this movie, in my opinion. Um, it's a sixty. I have final score is six for me. I, if you do not care about anything political messaging whatsoever, you are an NPC with zero inner monologue and you just like being entertained and turning your brain off, sure, go watch it. I think it's a enjoyable movie. Just anyway. Like I think if, you, if you're if you down for Marvel, then you're going to see it anyway, and you probably already have. Um, right. It, it's certainly better than, say, CBS's uh, travesty of a show called Halo. Uh, with well, zero ties to the actual, I don't, it's it's haven't all, been watched. It's I don't, so bad. I don't care. It, it's um, so horrendous. But yeah, I think this is not the worst Marvel movie. No, no, I I, I so agree to, with that. Um, it's not the worst. It's maybe fourth worst. I'd say the Eternals is way way worse than this yes, one. Eternals is like solidly like probably the worst MC movie. So bottom far. tier, bottom of the barrel. Worst one, hands down. Yeah. This film, about two steps above that. Yeah. I don't know what would be like in front of it, but this one's um, not the right worst. Right above Eternals, you would have like Iron Man three. Okay. Um, Maybe Thor the original the, Thor. Thor the Dark World. Or the Dark World. Okay, that's that's. I don't. It's kind of. I actually like okay. the Dark World. Pretty, I liked it more. Uh, I didn't like the original one. The original one was boring as. I liked Dark World more when I saw it the second time. Okay, I mean, yeah. Uh, but that's just the, me. Uh, but yeah. I'm going to go with 60. 60. 60%. 6 out of 10. I go 65. Uh, I'll give uh, it a 65 okay. for me. All right. Um, because I do think it suffers from a lot of things. And you are you are correct. and Which is something I try not to judge the film on. The exterior, exterior your things happening around the film like the fact that Disney has come out and said they're trying to push basically a woke agenda in their films like I don't pay attention to that stuff so I don't know that stuff anyway and I don't see that in the movie because it's not like again they've been very egregious like very blatantly obvious trying to push that in yeah. certain films where it's just like Guys, you could have made this really cool, and you made it really cool. So, like, if you're, but like, if but this one is not that bad. But, but I do been, see your point. It could have there been are so points. much better, though. Like, we could have seen like a Tom Cruise Iron Man, or uh, no, I like, don't need that. I it would have been so cool. I don't though. need Tom Cruise in anything. <laughs> but <laughs> you, like, you, we could have seen, we could have seen a lot more developed uh, cameos. We could have seen maybe like a Hugh Jackman Wolverine would have been but sweet. But then everybody would be or a Maguire. It's too loaded. It, eh, they would have been wrong. Or like a Maguire Spider Man. Like, I think they had the right amount of cameos that were put in at the right time. They, I think, if they would have been fleshed out a like little bit what more, what they did made sense, and I don't think they need to be fleshed out more because they're not sticking around. I mean, there's no John Krasinski got like. He basically played his character from uh, from 
a quiet place in in no. in as as Reed Richards. Like he, I don't think it's his fault. I think he just literally did not get enough time to figure out what he wanted to do with the character. His job was to show up, be John Krasinski as Reed Richards, so everybody can get excited and then die. That's fine, if but that still, was though, his job. I blame writing on that because the the job of an actor is to take on the person and role of the character, and not he, to play themselves. And he's John Krasinski as Reed Richards, not or it's I'm more saying, like Reed like Richards did as what, John Krasinski. He did what they expected, him, what he was expected to do fine. in that part. Is my point fine? Like, was it underdeveloped? Yes, but I don't think developing it anymore would matter because he's going to die and the character we're going to get from him hopefully well, I three years from now is actually going to be yeah and I, I certainly hope that he's more fleshed then. out than he was in this film because this version of Reed well, Richards did, sucked that, that's such a stupid thing to say because he was on screen for well, not, three minutes and he well, wasn't supposed to be developed I mean they killed him within five minutes and they gave him all the dimension of like you know, a comic book character. Like, yeah, he was, because he was, he was on screen for five thin. minutes and his job is to show up and die. You're not supposed to care about it because it's... But they only... could have. My thing is they could have. It's but the then multiverse it of madness. We got much. like three dimensions. It would have been too much. And Bruce Campbell. You can't spend <laughs> 15 minutes developing Reed Richards. No. you just can't. I'm only using that as a placeholder to have beef with the fact that... You can't say it's you a wanted film the character about to be more developed dimensions. and they should have had more characters. Well... Okay, that, that might be a more fair point to say because you're right. If they would have had more characters, then they would have had to divide it up equally or at least pace it out a little bit better. I mean, they could have been longer, and I'm all for long movies. So I don't mind I. sitting through a three-and-a-half-hour movie. No, I would have been Sign absolutely... That. Yes. But if you're trying to get to two hours, they, that's what you do. I'm just saying, they had three dimensions, and Doctor Strange just basically got pushed around the entire time and got told he's wrong about everything, and then bo- all three of the male cameo leads got offed within minutes of screen time followed by a series of woke blunders for it's just a six for me i just can't give it better than that okay 60 percent for you that's fair yeah so I, i'm going 65 like i'm not that that's much not higher. that's not a huge disparity there I'm not that much higher than you because i do think it does suffer from a number of things even though i don't completely agree with the egregiousness of some of them i do recognize that they're there all right um so yeah that's where i where I land. So that's pretty much just going to wrap this up for us then. Yeah, I think so. 60 to 65. That's not... Again, if you're down for Marvel, like you've already seen this movie. Yeah. Th- yeah. Which, no, cool. We're, not, yeah, we're and, preaching the uh, choir. To be fair, here. even though we've talked a lot about like things we didn't like, I really... I enjoyed this movie. Like I had a good time watching this movie. There was a lot to enjoy watching this movie. I enjoyed it significantly less and that was on the heels of So if you're Morbius. not into Marvel... Like, well, you're not going to watch it anyway. This isn't right. going to get you on board. Like, if you're no. not down for Marvel, yeah. don't watch this movie because it's not going to get you on board. No. It just isn't. And if you disagree with us, uh, feel free to comment below. I, I, honestly, we, we want to hear your opinions. And if you didn't yeah. like it, tell us why. If you think we missed something, tell us why. Uh, but, yeah, I think I think that's it for me anyway. Yeah, I, I think for me too. We're good. All right, cool. So I think we're going to be hitting up Obi-Wan when it comes out next. That should be really fun. Yeah. That'll yeah. be our next, like film review that's going to be for a new release we're going to try to stay true to our format with like older films but tr- uh stay tuned for that yeah, one because we're, we're gonna we're gonna every, do every single episode out, so and that's my forte i will have thoughts and i'm just long for the ride because i you know the world of star wars is cool and that's as far as my love for it goes all right well cool <laughs> thank you for watching if you enjoyed this content please leave us a like and consider subscribing we'd really appreciate it and please let us know your thoughts and opinions on the movie in the comments below we'll catch you next time